Look, the biggest podcast where you can learn them lessons. Line for line where you can learn from different sections. Made it out the mud, come tell your story, blessings. Never know who listening, never know who stressing. Divine gave you a voice, come speak your honest truth. Line for line, go ball for ball, it's up to you. Wanna talk sports, gov, and politics? Wanna talk about where you from and your accomplishments? The line for line is really where you need to be. A platform that's really made for folks like you and me. You can find it all no matter what you seek. Whether you calling or you listening, tune in every week. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Line for Line Podcast. I'm your host with the most, Devon Booker. We have a gracious young lady in the building today. You guys may know her already from being on the show and being throughout the podcast before. We have Mrs. Lily Dempsey in the building. Lily, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm actually doing pretty good. It's Sunday. It's hot, but I'm here. I made it. I'm above ground. I'm winning right now. So obviously with the people already knowing you, we have people just tell the world just a little bit about themselves. Go ahead and just read yourself to the world and catch them up to the world of Lily Dembski. Okay, so I'm Lily Dembski. I am going into my sophomore year at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I am going to school for dance and then I'm minoring in entrepreneurship. So, yes, um, I own um, Inspire Dance Project, which is a small kind of ongoing studio project that I created. And then I also run Dance for Hope, which is an annual cancer fundraiser camp. So I have all that going right yes, now. We have, yes, so, yeah. And you've been busy as well, too. We see that you just came back into the country. We see you just had your dance camp as well, too. Just speak a little bit about the extracurricular activities you've been having going on and how they're treating you. Yeah, so I just got back from Greece. I went there for study abroad for dance. Um, I got to train with a bunch of choreographers from Greece, Japan, Germany, all that kind of stuff. So I got to see their work presented as well, which is really cool. And then my dance camp, um, it all started with my grandpa passed away from mesothelioma cancer. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where it all started last year. Super small. I had like maybe 10 kids. Um, It was just ran out of my mom's daycare. And then this year, I was able to really expand it, and it was a year in the making, and it was a great turnout. So we got to donate over $400 to the American Cancer Society. Nice. Yes. Nice. Anything you do is a blessing to donate, you know? Okay. And when people use the kindness in their heart to help you accomplish goals like that, that's really cool. So you studied abroad. Can you just tell us a little bit about what that was like taking in the culture and seeing dance mm-hmm. from different parts of the world and different people? Yeah, so it was definitely a great experience. Um, I've never done, obviously, anything like that. At Madison, we have amazing professors and stuff like that, but it was really fun to, you know, kind of learn different styles and different training styles of how other people have came in. We also got to take some folk dance classes, so I got to learn some traditional Greek dances. Yeah, that was really cool, too, and we got to go watch some of the traditional Greek dances where they had, like, their traditional outfits on and all of that stuff. That was really cool to learn about the culture and the backstory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. With you being from the States, what do you feel like you brought representing your culture and your talents there? Yeah, I feel like taking the classes, um, there was definitely a wide range of talent and all of that. And it was amazing to see all the different talent. Um, I feel like we definitely brought some of what we've learned from back home, obviously from Madison, Mm -hmm. um, in terms of tricks and stuff like that which was cool and i even got to do an interview with some of the dancers there you're lying for my dance project um so yeah i got to talk about dance in the public schools that was my research that i was doing there Uh so that was really cool to learn about and talk to them about and how it's incorporated there nice nice now obviously with us catching up obviously you're in your sophomore year at madison now can you just tell us about what it was like going to the uw and what what it's been like for you um i love it Um, it was definitely a big transition to go from, you know, Kenosha's very small town almost feels, um, everybody kind of knows each other. So to go to Madison, this huge school, um, it was a great, it's been a great opportunity. I've learned so much from so many different dancers, so many amazing professors who have traveled the world to dance and all of this stuff. So I'm really excited to go into my sophomore year and see what else I can learn and just continue growing. Of course, of course. Now with the things that you learn abroad. Do you plan to implement any of those into your teachings, into your learnings or your style? Yeah, so I actually have started to do that. Um, Even at my dance camp, I taught the contemporary classes and there's some warm ups in terms of like getting in touch with your body and really being present in yourself that I learned when I was in Greece. And I really loved them, even just like working together and some contact movement and stuff like that. I've definitely already started to teach that. 
to my kids and stuff like that. So that's been great and they've loved it. And yeah, I can, I hope to continue to do that. Of course, of course. Now with you being as busy and as big of a superstar as you are, how, how does it feel though to know that the time that you do have to yourself, you're giving back to people and you're teaching other people? I mean, it feels great. I can remember being six years old and always saying, I'm going to change the world one day. And I mean, that's my goal in the end. You know, there's a lot of people who have grown up dancing and haven't had the best environment. And so to have like my kids that are part of my dance project go, oh, you want to come hang out with us today? And they just view me as like an older sister almost. Mm -hmm. Um, It's great. And even just like the cancer fundraisers and everything, just knowing that I was put here to do something and that thing was to dance and now I can give back with dance it's just a big full circle moment that I never thought I would have achieved so of course of course with you being on the younger side Mm -hmm. do you find it more easier to connect with the people that you do come in contact with through your camps and through your community outreach yeah I think it's definitely been helpful to be similar in age or not that far away in age because again I'm continuing to take classes and learn and I'm present in the styles that are present today mm-hmm. and I'm currently training in them so to take my training and just continue to feed it into all of the kids that I teach um it's amazing and I just love that they want to be at class and want to instead of going off oh, we have to do it again they go can we do it five more times I just <laughs> I lo- I love that and I love having kids that do that so of course of course now, with you learning at UW-Madison, can you just tell us a little about the difference of learning at the college level versus learning at the high school level and learning at the lower level outside of college? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, obviously, academics in general are difficult at Madison. Um, it definitely takes a lot of hard work and dedication, but I think being able to go to school for dance, it has made me really put in more work and want to be there, right? I just want to continue to learn, and I'm just a sponge soaking up everything around me even my business classes like my end goal is the business side of dance so I'm just soaking up everything it is a little more difficult and it takes a lot more time um but it's all worth it in the end and you just feel like you're getting one step closer to your goal from every class that you take which of course Last time we met, I think you were still in high school, actually, right? Yeah. So just tell us a little about what the college life and college atmosphere has been like for you, because this is years down the line, so obviously you've grown a lot since the last time we've come across each other's path. Yeah, I mean, I think in in high school, you're kind of more just worried about yourself. Um, But once I got into college, I honestly just had learned that I can go and meet so many different people and learn from them. Like, there's something I can learn from everybody. And again, especially in that field of dance, I've just, instead of that like competitiveness, there's none of that really in college, oh, wow. especially like in the dance program, like we don't compete against each other. We're all watching each other and learning from each other and we're all on this road to get better. Mm-hmm. So um, that's definitely been great. And just the sense of like community and the sense of everybody being on the same page and supporting each other. It's great. And I've loved it so far. So. Of course, of course. Now, when you have your free time outside of school and things of that nature, how are you perfecting your craft and what does it look like for you to work on yourself and your moves and skills? So I do take classes occasionally. Um, Most of my focus now is teaching. So I have done a few. I had the Zion Public Library in Illinois had invited me in last year to do like a class there. So I kind of just take any of those opportunities that I can get to get myself out there Mm -hmm. And do all that. Um, I also work a lot on flyers and business stuff and all of that. My Dance for Hope camp I've been working on for almost a year now. So I'm going to start planning for 2025 in about a month. Oh, really? Yeah, that's like my, that's what I do a lot of the time is that planning and the emails. And But I love it. I love the business side of it. Of course. So. And you had a camp yesterday, right? Yes. Can you just speak on the turn turnaround? that you had with that the location as well too and what it was all like yeah so I was at the boys and girls club shout out to them um but it was it was great we had about 21 dancers and then I was myself and then two other teachers who are both in college for dance so we all kind of have that experience um we had contemporary class jazz class and hip-hop and that was great uh, we had a lot of families come in and get to put up like ribbons with families' names on them and stuff that had been affected by cancer. And we had a lot of donations also come in from other people who didn't attend the camp, which was great. Um, so yeah, it was a great turnout, and I can't wait to have it grow next year. The year one, obviously, you got to take it all mm-hmm. in. Is there anything that you look to do differently next year to make it an even more bigger event? 
Yeah, so I think I definitely would work on partnerships or sponsorships with some businesses and stuff and helping promote their businesses at my event Mm -hmm. um, in terms for like some financial support because that was especially like our shirts and all of that, like those definitely cost money. So um, that would be great. And even just more community involvement. I would love to involve small businesses and stuff like that in Kenosha because again, it's all for a great cause. We're all in this together trying to do something great. So it'd be great to have like that of course, of course. Now to those young ladies and even young men out there who are looking and interested in pursuing sure dance, what piece of advice would you give them to get started and maybe just don't look at the jitters of, oh, I'm scared to start? I would just say that you need to watch people and instead of wanting to be like them, you just need to learn from them and you'll eventually get there. I always tell my dancers, every class you come to, get 1% better. You don't need to come to the next class and be 30% better or 100% better. If you come to each class and get 1% better and work on one thing, eventually all those 1% add up to 100%. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the best piece of advice that I can give to any dancer or anybody and just going for it. You know, I didn't. I never would have thought I would have been here even five years ago. I no would never thought. Yeah, and now I'm like achieving my dreams and so just going for it and not caring what anybody says because people will say stuff especially when it relates to the arts and dance and stuff that it's not a real career you need a backup plan but here I am so what would you say that's crazy about when you do things that are like publicized like what we're doing right now this is on tv basically so it's like I I face that as well two people say oh well you should have done it this way or I would have done it this way or oh you're doing it wrong you're doing it this way it's like we put ourselves out there for public criticism how well do you block that out when you go into it, knowing that there's got to be criticism, whether you're doing it good, whether you're doing it bad, whether you're doing it at all, people are going to have something to say. Well, I always say the people that critique you and have so much to say are normally just jealous of where, how you've achieved things and all of that. Um, but I try my best to block it out. And I mean, all you can do is prove to people that they're wrong and you know, you build an empire basically, and then they go, oh my gosh. And when they're sending their kids to my dance classes, then I guess it'll all play <laughs> over itself. So. Right, right, all right. Now, can you tell us about any of the struggles that you may have faced as an early on dancer versus where you're at now and how you were able to overcome those? Yeah, um, I think I really struggled growing up in dance, just really believing in myself and having that confidence. But once I started getting older and I started working with Kelly Griffin who is my current mentor Mm -hmm. um she really taught me that instead of again going in and going oh my gosh I'm so jealous of that person you have to realize every single person on this earth looks up to somebody and goes I want to be better I want to dance like them or I want to do this like them but those people who you look up to also look up to somebody else so instead of being jealous and all of that um just kind of watching and learning and how can you take away from them all this information that they've learned and then you all kind of just grow together so I think that was definitely difficult when I was younger to go into conventions or competitions and just be defeated because somebody was better than me but now it's just like I'd rather be in a room full of people who are much better than me because I learned so much walking away from that class of course of course of course now for those people out there too obviously they love the gems that people give can you just help us understand time management and how you were so effective at that of being a dance instructor being a student and still having a life as well too how are you able to fit all this in and have homework yeah um it's definitely a little difficult thankfully with dance we don't have as much homework other than like maybe i have to choreograph a solo or something um to present but um with everything it is difficult sometimes and i have had to leave some of my social life behind but i mean When you're chasing your dreams, that's what you got to do. And the people who support you and want to see you be successful, they find time to be there and stuff like that. Even my own family, like, they'll come to my camp. They came to my camp just to come sit and watch. Like, they didn't have to do that, but they know it's my dream. And to spend time with me, sometimes you got to be part of that. Um, But it definitely is a balance of even now, like, I'll work my job with my three to four-year-olds at my mom's daycare. And I'll work from like 9 to 6 and Mm -hmm. I would hop on my computer and work from 6 to 10 p.m. on all of my camp stuff. But I mean, it all works out in the end and it's great. I love doing all that. 
especially when you're chasing that dream, you know? And like, for me personally, I feel good when I'm like hustling because people say, man, Dev, you're doing it. You have this podcast, you have a career, you have a child, you have all this stuff. But it's like, when you're doing what you love, you don't really view it as work. So whenever I'm doing anything for the podcast, I don't sit there and say, oh, I have another hour of this or I have 20 more minutes of this. It's like, this is what I love. I'm not even looking at the time. I'm really infatuated with what I'm doing, who I'm talking to, and the things that are to come from this. So I definitely feel you on that, young lady. As we get ready to close out this phenomenal episode, can you just tell us what's more to come from Lily Dembski finishing school and your dance camps and everything of that nature? Yeah, so I'm hoping to travel a little bit more, maybe go teach abroad. That would be a big goal of mine. Um, me and my mom are kind of working on something together to do that as she's in education and I'm in dance. So that'd be cool to travel abroad. Um, dance for Hope 2025 is coming soon. And then my Inspire Dance project, that's going to just continue to grow. And hopefully in the next three years, it'll become its own big studio and I'll get to teach a bunch of amazing people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of what I have planned for right now. But, you know, everything's changing. We never know what opportunities we get. Of course. Are there any shout outs that you would like to give anyone out there? Maybe some people back in Greece. I know they're in white. I'm doing Maybe any shout outs or anything like that. Um, definitely a shout out to my wonderful mentor and coach, Kelly Griffin. She really has. I would have never been where I am today without her. And she's really just kind of held my hand through everything and presented all these opportunities to me. I would have never been where I am without her. So thank you to her. Uh, and of course, thank you to my parents. They, I would have never been here also without them <laughs> investing the time and the money and all of that. And they're still continuing to support me to this day. Um, and then, yeah, thanks to the Madison Dance Department, I guess, because they really helped me um, believe in myself and even the girls there have really helped. So, yeah. Of course. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. I'm your host, the most Devon Booker. That was Lily Dembski, and that was another episode of Live for Live Podcast. You calling, are you listening? Tune in every week. Live for Live. Oh, yeah, I'm going Live for Live.